Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we are going to talk about comic books, the comic book industry. We're gonna talk about IDW and how everybody seems to be jumping ship. Everybody is jumping ship from IDW. I am very surprised that this company is still in business. They, uh, they kind of Icarus themselves chasing Hollywood deals, chasing streaming deals, and it's actually pretty sad. I mean, IDW years ago was a, a, a great publisher. Um, in fact, disclaimer, I actually did some work for them. Uh, I never had a problem with anyone I worked uh, for or with. The only problem I had with them was getting paid, and that is a, a problem that has uh, come up again and again and again in recent years with uh, IDW's financial problems, and uh, it does seem par for the course for a lot of these independent comic book publishers now. I mean, all this talk about comics are doing great, comics are doing fantastic, and we've got companies like you know IDW having you know major financial issues, losing licenses, losing creators. Then we've got. Uh, let's see, Oni Press, I guess, not paying people. Um, we've got the uh, was it Action Labs out of Pittsburgh, not paying people. Seems to be an ongoing, ongoing issue, doesn't it, with a lot of these, uh, a lot of these publishers. But it's it's the best comics have ever been. Comics have never been better. Anyway, we're going to talk about this uh, situation with IDW from the outside, because I have no idea what the hell is going on inside IDW at this point. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. Guys, over, wow, 275,000 subs, almost 276,000. Uh, check out Crimson Wren on Indiegogo. We have about two weeks left on this campaign. We're at almost $50,000 for uh, what is essentially an all-ages fantasy book. Now, by all-ages, I don't mean a kiddie book. It's actually for all-ages for anybody who likes to read comics and is looking for a classic uh, action-adventure fantasy story uh, written by Geeky and myself, drawn by Jose Garcia. It is over 130 pages. It will be published as a hardcover to go along with the Shadowbinders comics. And um, yeah, this one's not coming out from IDW. So <laughs> that's, that's great. You guys are supporting us directly. We don't have to wait months and months and months to get paid. Uh, thankfully, because the printers like to be paid. And we like to ship our books out to you as, as quick as we can. So, yeah, there's been a lot of uh, comings and goings, and, and a lot of people have been reporting on it. Uh, Rich Johnson over at Bleeding Cool has uh, W. Maxwell Prince, and is it uh, Martin Morazzo's Art Brute moves from IDW to Image? And this isn't the only comic that is moving to Image. I've, I've heard a few other creators are going over to Image as well. Uh, IDW is not a very stable place to be working right now. Uh, we don't know what's going on with them. We're going to talk about some of their... Uh, uh, shuffles at the top. <laughs> you know, they've, I mean, pretty much everybody I worked with at IDW, and this is, God, this has probably been 2014, 2015. Uh, everybody I worked with is gone. They all got gone. And these were people that were with the company pretty much since the beginning, and they're, they're no longer there. None of the editors I worked with are there. Uh, I don't even think any other creatives I worked with are freelancing for the company anymore. Um, you know, now I work primarily on licensed books, but there's been a lot of upheaval in you know, the last couple of years at IDW, especially, and they're going to be losing some more licenses and their financials are not good, but let's talk about who's leaving. So this is a W. Maxwell Prince and uh, Martin, Martin Marazzo. Uh, they are jumping ship to Image. Um, and we're going to talk about Stan Sakai and uh, Yosagi Ojimbo, which is, you know, a huge deal. They're going to Dark Horse. Uh, those books, Stan Sakai is going to Dark Horse. With a Dogu Publishing? Now, that's the little Japanese alien guy, right? I've watched Ancient, Ancient Aliens. I know what that is. Except his is way cuter. So he's going to Dark Horse, and these other guys are going to Image. Uh, I, I guess we'll go with Stan Sakai first. He is, he is a legend. He's moving uh, Yasagi Yojimbo back from IDW to previous publisher Dark Horse, and all under the aegis of a new imprint called Dogu, uh, coming from Comics Beat. According to Facebook, he said, we're back at Dark Horse with a new imprint. Uh, Dark Horse Comics is pleased to announce a new partnership with Stan Sakai's Dogu Publishing, Yusagi Ojimbo Comics Universe, and more will return to Dark Horse under the umbrella of a new imprint, uh, Dogu. The announcement of this new partnership comes just ahead of the September 1st release of Season 2 of the hit Netflix animated series Samurai Rabbit, based on Yusagi Ojimbo. Uh, Dark Horse Comics has been a longtime home of the works of Stan Sakai. That's true. Most recently publishing the continuing new editions uh, of his work, uh, yada, yada, yada. Um, so they're going to expand the universe with this. Uh, Mike Richardson, 
is still in charge. And this is after Dark Horse got sold to Embracer Group. I think they got sold to Embracer Group. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is pretty interesting stuff. Uh, Mike Richardson said, it's with great excitement that we welcome back Stan Sakai and Yasagi Yojimbo to the Dark Horse family. Stan's one of comics' legendary creators. I agree with that. And we are extremely proud to announce the launch of Dogu Publishing. Stan and his team are preparing new adventures as well as bringing new and important voices to the comics community. Stan and I have been friends for a very long time, and I'm extremely pleased to renew our partnership. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this makes sense. This totally makes sense. But jump and ship from IDW. Mm, yeah, so they even mention it on Comics Beat. How do you make, is this how you make Donald? Uh, let me see. Dean Simons. I don't know who Dean Simons is. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so they lost uh, Transformers and G.I. Joe. I'm going to talk about that. They lost the Disney comic book licenses, which is why I'm no longer doing work uh, for them, because I, I basically traveled where the Disney comics license went, because um, I was at one point in time vetted by Disney to work on Disney comics. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that as one of the handful of people that was allowed to work on the comics for whatever publisher? Um, good times. and Those are way behind me now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, they lost the American Library of Comics going over to Clover Press, which I think were IDW guys. Um, yeah, and Dark Horse has been boosting their imprint levels with Kevin Smith's imprint. Oh, Kevin Smith. Yeah, have you seen some of the reviews for Clerks 3? They're not very good. Actually, some of them, I I'll be honest, some of them are uh, downright nasty. There was one, I think it was a Hollywood reporter um, making a joke about his heart attack. I'm like, God, you know, I, I don't like Kevin Smith very much given our, our history with He-Man, but I would never make that joke. You know, um, you don't wish for death or joke about somebody almost dying. Um, not cool. Anyway, so yeah, these guys are leaving too. They're going to Image. Beautiful work. Uh, I really like the uh, kind of European style of comics. Mobius look. Um, was it Lig Ligne Claire? I think they call it. I don't know. The clean line, clean line style, which I enjoyed. But yeah, um, going to Image Comics as well. So what's going on with, with uh, IDW? I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, they have a new CEO. <laughs> Former Archie media executive is going to take over. Um, this is uh, uh, Alan uh, Grantman is going to become the CEO, removing Ezra Rosensaft, effective August 29th, 2022. This is like, what, the th third CEO they've had in two years. They have been hemorrhaging money. Uh, IDW Media Holdings has had a choppy earnings history with a $2.3 million loss in its most recent quarter and a $5.4 million loss in its most recent fiscal year. So they're not doing well. They haven't been doing well. There was uh, somebody with RG, I don't know if it was this guy or somebody else, but it suggested that IDW sell itself, put itself up for sale. Now, I don't know who would buy IDW? Because here's the problem with IDW. The problem is it's all creator-owned titles and licensed stuff. They don't have a lot of their own IP. Um, unlike Dark Horse, which has spent you know considerable time building up their own stuff as well as uh, you know working with creators, as well as you know working uh, working out licensing deals. Uh, you know, and they it was a hail mary pass. They got sold to to Embracer. IDW's got nothing. Like, I don't even know what the future is for IDW. And I know they were a couple of months ago, uh, to, you know, looking to get more creator owned stuff. You know, come publish with us, everybody. IDW is great. IDW is fantastic. Is, you know, every freaking quarter they hemorrhage millions of dollars. Uh, they've got another development deal. This is what this is what it's about for IDW. They're basically Platinum Studios 2.0 at this point. They're, they're, trying to get some of these streaming shows to stick. And we know where streaming is right now. They're definitely cutting back a lot of these streamers because this stuff is way too expensive. But yeah, they're going to be in for World of Hurt. They're going to be losing Transformers and G.I. Joe at the end of 2022. Now, I think they still have Turtles and I think they still have Sonic. But the Hasbro licenses are a big deal. And there's a lot of freaking drama around the, uh, the Hasbro license, especially G.I. Joe, if you remember a couple of years ago, um, now I'm not going to name check the writer. It's, you know, kind of water under the bridge at this point, but there was some stuff said on Twitter, stupid stuff said on Twitter, if you can imagine that. And the, uh, GI Joe community, uh, being, being very patriotic did not take kindly to the comments, which had something to do with 9-11 and they, you know, boycotted the books. And then the GI Joe books got, uh, more and more 
activist minded, I guess, which is like the last book that you would expect to ever go quote unquote woke, but it did. The sales dropped off a cliff. Hasbro apparently wasn't happy. Um, yeah, so they're supposedly pulling the license from IDW the end of 2022. And the rumor is that it's going to skybound with Image, again, with Image. But they're still supposedly gonna publish books based on My Little Pony and D&D &D for now, for now, you know. Um, now, I guess the, the Larry Hama G.I. Joe books are actually pretty good. I haven't, I haven't read any of the IDW ones. I, I did check out the uh, Rob Liefeld Snake Eyes issue digitally, and it was, it was, it was okay, it was pretty good, you know. But uh, I haven't really been keeping up with the uh, the IDW Transformers comics um, since they killed Hunter Onion. They killed Hunter Onion. I didn't like that. So I'm like, yeah, I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. And that was a long time ago. Anyway, a lot of people are out, which is why I think they're losing the license and which is why they're losing a lot of money. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.